Hello there beautiful people, welcome back to Ian Aroma. Hello there once again, welcome back to Ian Aroma. In today's episode, I will be sharing my top 10 places and things that you can do when you visit the country of Iceland. We visited Iceland two years ago and it was one of the best experiences of my life. I really didn't know anything about Iceland and I personally suggest if you're going to visit this country, try to do your research. Do your research on the hotels that you should book, on the route that you should take and it will also depends if you're planning to visit Iceland in the summer or in the winter season. The things that you should remember if you visit Iceland, for example for us, we visited Iceland on the winter season so we have to make sure that every location that we will visit there will be sunlight because in the winter season there's only like four or five hours sunlight so you have to make sure and be very strategic on the places and the location that you will visit along the way. We visited Iceland for only six days and we make sure that every day we will make most out of it. If you google the things that you should do in Iceland it will recommend you do the full golden circle route. Normally on the winter season you can only visit the south portion of Iceland if you will be renting like a 4x4 car but in the summer season normally you can go in the A1 road it basically goes from the south going to the north and going back to the south but in our case we visited in the winter season and we were only advised to go to the south portion of Iceland. So in today's video, I will be sharing top 10 things and places that you can do or you can see in Iceland for at least 6 or 7 days of your stay. So before we start this top 10 places and things that you can do in Iceland, if you like this video, you can give it a like, you can share it, and if you're not subscribed, you can click subscribe to be updated on the following videos that I will upload on my channel. I have another Tagalog Tuesday episode coming up. So if you're a Filipino and if you want to see a Tagalog content in this channel, you can watch the Tagalog Tuesdays. But if not, I am uploading tourism and hospitality and life of an overseas Filipino worker here in Rome. So that's the content of my channel. So first stop in our list is the city of Reykjavik. So when you land in Iceland, you will land in the city called Keflavik. And the airport is called Keflavik International Airport. Uh, at the moment, I just checked the flights from Rome to Iceland. There are no direct flights at the moment. Probably it's because of COVID. However, the prices for Rome to Iceland is roughly 500 to 600 euros with a stop in Germany or Paris or London. So when we went to Iceland, we rented a car. The car costs us like 500 to 600 euros. That is for seven days. That's including the insurance as well. And for you, if you're planning to go to Iceland, I personally suggest for you to rent a bigger car, a 4x4, because the wind is very strong and it's kind of scary to be on a smaller car while try trying to drive in the A1 road which is like along the coast of Iceland so we personally recommend you to get a bigger car so that you will feel more comfortable while driving along the way most of the time you will be in the car so might as well get a bigger and more comfortable car so you will feel safe while driving in the A1 road after landing in Iceland, we just went to Reykjavik for a quick stop. So we stayed one night in Reykjavik. We spent like 100 euros in a hotel and we took advantage of trying to see the city center as well. So you can go to the famous church which is called Hallgrim's Church. So if you go to this church, uh, there is an elevator that you can go above and you can see the whole view of the whole Reykjavik. One of the famous things to visit in Reykjavik as well is a store. It is called Bajerin's Best to Kill Store. So I cannot really pronounce all the names correctly so I'm so sorry you can comment down below for the correct pronunciation but basically this store this it's not even a restaurant actually it's a stall that it's world famous for its hot dogs. You can also try to visit the whole seaside area it's like you can see the architecture that they have there. Explore the city center or you can even buy a yellow wrinkle like this. When we went to Iceland, 
we were looking at some Instagram profiles and most of the people, they were wearing yellow raincoat jackets. It is a very good backdrop on most of the views and most of the pictures that you will take. So try to get a very colorful raincoat. The raincoat as well will help you in case it rains and it's also a good windbreaker so you won't get cold easily. The yellow raincoat actually, it's really nice on the picture if you see it. The next step that I will mention is the area called Sifra. We went to the national park called King Veller. King Veller is the area where you can find the two tectonic plates, North America to the European Asian tectonic plates. And there is a snorkeling and a diving tour that you can take. For the snorkeling and the diving tour, you will be paying 95 euros for the snorkeling tour that will take at least uh, 2 to 3 hours. And for the diving, you will be paying 180 euros for a 5 hours dive in the whole tectonic plates. I will be posting the direct link for the group tour that we use for this tour so that you have idea on the kind of tours that you can make if you try to visit Silfra in the future. Make sure if you're going to pick the diving tour, you should have a diving license. For the snorkeling, you don't need any license and there will be a tour guide. I mean, it's very cold. It's like negative two degrees on the water, but they will make you wear a dry suit so you don't feel very cold. And they advise you to bring wool socks, warmers, and proper clothing on the diving. I will put all the information on the description below so you have any idea if you want to do the snorkeling or the diving in the future. So Iceland is basically formed because of volcanic eruption. There's a lot of volcanoes in Iceland. <laughs> And next on our list is the famous Geyser. So if you go to the Geyser or the Hot Spring area, it is free to go to that area actually. And there's a lot of Hot Spring resort being built at the moment. It's kind of costly. It's kind of expensive to stay in those areas. So for us, we just visited this area and we didn't even stay there. So basically we just saw the Geyser. So there are three main parts of the Geyser area and just go along the way. So the Geyser, it erupts every few minutes. And as if you see it like the water like erupts like 30 meters high so it's like a nice thing to see so if you visit gaze here which is along the golden route circle you will stop on our first waterfalls our number seven we have Gulfoss waterfalls so Gulfoss waterfalls is one of the famous waterfalls in Iceland and it's one of the most beautiful as well so Gulfoss waterfalls as well is the largest volume waterfalls in Europe along the way the golden circle we have another waterfalls which is on my top six it is the Seljalan Foss so on the winter season Seljalan Foss actually is frozen and on the summer season you can go along the back of the waterfalls which is like a nice thing to do but be careful because if you go there you might get wet so bring your raincoat and make sure you have change of clothes but on the winter you're not allowed to do it and like the area itself is a bit frozen and my number five is Skogafoss. So this is like the third waterfalls along the Golden Circle area. So this is one of the biggest waterfalls in Iceland. It has like around 62 meters in height and 25 meters in width. And the good thing about this waterfalls is there are steps along the side of it that you can go above the waterfall so you can see the top view. It is not frozen but some parts of the waterfalls are. So just be careful if you're going on the steps. It's a bit slippery so just be careful trying to go on the steps and if you reach the top if you walk further actually there are multiple waterfalls along the way and actually you will find the river called Skoga River and above it there are multiple waterfalls and you can take a lot of nice photos on those area so on the previous uh, places that I mentioned a while ago most of them you are not allowed to fly drones anymore but some of the people what they do is they try to drive like few meters away from this site and then they can fly their drones. One good thing about Skoga Falls as well, it's famous for camping during the summertime. Summertime, it's still like 10 degrees in the daylight. It's still a bit cold and make sure if you're going to camp, uh, make sure you have like a very good tent or sometimes you have a camper van. So number four in our list actually is the area of Vic. It is the area of Rainis Drangar or Vic area or the Black Sand Beach. 
Uh, this beach actually was nominated by National Geography as top 10 non-tropical beach to visit in the planet. If you visit this area, try to be careful opening the doors of your car because the wind is very strong. And if you walk along the way, be careful and stay away from the water at least 100 feet because they have this wave called sneakers wave, which is like you won't be aware that there will be big waves coming. So try to avoid going near the water and never turn your back against the water. That is the advice that you will get when you go to that area. And actually this area is free. You can just go there whenever you want. And there's like a tourist information center like on the entrance of the parking lot. And the parking lot is free actually. So this is one of the nice things if you visit Iceland. Most of the parking lots you don't have to pay for it. And if you ask information from the people or the tourist information center, they're very nice to accommodate you and normally you won't feeling that you have to pay something just to ask for information next up on our list we are now in number three to the glacier and the ice cave tour so the area that we went on the south coast of Iceland is called Jokul Sarla glacier lagoon so on the ice tour actually we paid 65 euros per person it's a bit pricey but what they do is you will go to the location site and they will bring you in the glacier here because like it's a glacier ice cave tour and you will be riding this big massive cars or like trucks it's the first time I saw this kind of truck it's like has six wheels and one of the good thing about this glacier tour is like they educate you the importance of climate change and the effects of climate change in Iceland and how fast the ice melts so you will have a, a lot of information in this tour and at the end of the tour actually they will drop you off in the lagoon where you can take a lot of photos and you can also have another tour which is the boat tour that will cost you 65 euros for two hours if you don't want to do that just they will drop you off on that area and you can walk to the second top place that you should visit in Iceland which is called the Diamond Beach so basically the diamond beach it's like a lot of big chunks of ice so it's one of the most picturesque beach that i've ever been in my life basically you cannot swim it's very cold and there is no much way there are a lot of ice chunks floating and it's it's very nice to see like so the golden circle tour actually or the golden circle route ends in the diamond beach and on my number one actually is watching the northern lights now there's a lot of tour organizers and tour groups or tour agencies that you can buy a 50 euro northern lights tour they will bring you to the darkest area near Reykjavik actually or in the a1 road because you need a total darkness if you want to see this northern lights so in the six seven days that we were in Iceland we were very un unfortunate that we didn't see it and they even even recommend on the website to go in Iceland between November to March and we were there in January so some people get lucky and then it will just show you can even download an app to see if you can have the northern lights on the day that you will visit Iceland so you can just google it northern lights app and then you will see like they will tell you the probability that you can see the lights or not but aside from that I also put driving along a1 road it's the northern the lights and the driving the driving during the winter season we didn't have any problems the driving actually is one of the best experience that we have in Iceland because of views because of the landscape because of the different things that you can see along the way there's a lot of things to see while you are driving on your own than being on a tour guide or in a tour organized Icelandic way if you notice I didn't include the Blue Lagoon on the list because we actually did the Blue Lagoon on the day that we fly back to Rome it will cost you around 300 to 500 euros per night if you stay in the Blue Lagoon where if you stay in the nearby city you'll pay like 80 to 100 euros per night the advantage of staying in Blue Lagoon is like you can use the whole, the whole amenities. So if you just want to go to Blue Lagoon, just to use the lagoon actually, you will pay 37 euros and you will stay there like 
maximum eight hours if you want and then after that they even have a shuttle going to the airport we went to blue lagoon and then we went back and stayed near the airport because our flight was like in six in the morning so we have to stay near the airport so that we won't be late for our flight going back to rome so that's that once again thank you very much for watching this video give it a like if you like this video you can subscribe if you want to be updated on the videos that i will upload here in youtube and i hope to see you again on the following videos so thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for your support i have 127 subscribers at the moment yay so that's that once again this is erwin agana noskal this is ian aroma channel goodbye